In the last video, we updated the palm.xml to make this a Spring Boot project, at least get all the jars that we needed for this to be a Spring Boot project. We're going to go into some more details about what these things do a bit later, but for now I'm going to close this file and I'm going to go to the next step in building a Spring Boot application. What I'm going to do now is create a simple Java class. So I'm going to go to SRC main Java and here I'm going to right click, create a new class and this is going to be I'm going to put this in the package io dot java brains dot spring boot starter and uh, the name of this is going to be course api app okay so this is the main the starting point for our application and this is going to be a java class believe it or not but the main method so I'm going to click public static void main and click finish. So this is going to be a Java class which has a main method and this is where we're going to bootstrap a Spring Boot application. Now why am I creating a class with a main method? You remember I told you how Spring Boot creates a Spring application that's standalone. It doesn't need a servlet container. It doesn't need to be deployed on a server. The way it works is by having a class with a main method that you can start just like any other simple Java program which has a main method. And this takes care of everything. This creates that servlet container, starts it, and hosts your application for you. Now, that seems like quite a lot. So this is going to be very complicated code, right? Well, it turns out it's not so. So what is the code that needs to go here in order to set up a simple application, start the servlet container, and host that application in that servlet container? Well, here are the steps. Step one, we somehow have to find a way to tell Spring that this is a Spring application. Now, how do we do this? So there is an annotation which lets us do exactly this. And we need to annotate the main class, the class with the main method with this annotation. And the annotation is at Spring Boot application and this we should have in the class path because of the things we've added to the palm.xml and here you go it's from spring org spring framework boot auto configure now this annotation now tells spring boot that this is the starting point for our spring boot application now what should the contents of this main method be you need to tell spring boot to start this application which is the course api app and then create a sublet container and host this application in that sublet container and make it available, right? Those are the things that you need. Well, that seems like a lot of code, but it turns out Spring Boot has a really nice utility which lets us do this in just one line. And you have that available by a static method. You just need to call one static method and it's gonna do all that stuff for you. So the name of the class, the static class is Spring Application dot run. So this is the static method we need to call. So there is a static class called spring application and that has a method called run that takes in two arguments. The first argument is the class where you have the main method that's annotated with a spring boot application. Well that's course API app. So I'm going to pass that in here. Course API app dot class. I need to pass in the class which is the first argument to run. The second argument to run is basically the arguments that could have been passed to the main method. So if you want to pass in arguments to the Spring application run, you can just pass in arguments to the course API app when you run it, and it is going to pass that in through this. So the args variable is just going to be a pass through. Essentially what we're doing is you're calling a static method, Spring application dot run, and you're passing the name of the class where you have your main method. And the second argument is just a pass through of the args. I'm going to save this and believe it or not, this is our Spring Boot application. It doesn't do anything, but it is, it is a Spring Boot application and it has everything it needs to create that servlet container and run it. If you don't believe me? Let's run this. So I'm going to click the run button over here, which is going to run the main method of this course API app. When I click this, I'm going to run this as a Java application. The Spring Boot app is an extra option that we're going to get because we are using the Spring tool suite, but I'm going to ignore that and run this as a plain Java application. 
click OK. Uh, let's open the console. You see here there's a lot of stuff that's happening and it's all coming from Spring. So you see here, uh, let me expand this. We have this nice ASCII art which reads Spring and it says it's Spring Boot and the version number that I'm using. There's a bunch of stuff that's doing over here but here you see there is this one line which says started course API app in two and a half seconds. So we have the application started. Tomcat started on port 8080. So I wasn't kidding. It's actually started the servlet container. So let's verify if it actually has done that. So if I were to open a browser and go to localhost 8080, I get an error page. So this is an error from the Tomcat servlet container. It's an error page which says there is no explicit mapping for slash error, so you're seeing this as a fallback. So what's happening is I access the URL, and since there's no mapping for the URL, it tries to go to slash error, but there is no mapping for slash error as well, which is why I get an error page like this.